Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. And it's that time of year again. It's that time of year where you should be thinking about buying some more Asian movies, either on DVD or Blu-ray. So this is going to be my first uh, DVD collection video. Completely unscripted, so I may just blabber on. I may have to check my notes a few times if I come across a movie that I haven't seen in a few years. Um, I'm not going to be giving full reviews of all these, but you got to say something about each of them, right? So I thought this would be a good idea to show off my DVD collection. And tonight we're going to be looking at some of my Chinese language DVDs. And this will need multiple parts, of course. Um, so, yeah, most of my collection, actually almost everything, is in DVD format, not Blu-ray. I, uh, I think it's just because a lot of these films have not made their way to Blu-ray yet. A lot of them probably never will, <laughs> actually. Uh, but maybe some of them. Some of them already have, but I don't know. I just feel like I've just had this huge collection of DVDs, and I just keep adding to it. So to shift to Blu-ray, just, uh, I don't know. I'm just not seeing it right now. But let's begin. So the first DVD I have here tonight is called 14 Blades. So this is a Donnie Yen movie. It's got Donnie Yen, Zhao Wei, and Kate Choi. Now, uh, Donnie, of course, you know. Zhao Wei was in uh, Green Tea, my favorite romance film that I've ever seen. I, did, I have a review of that on my channel. Plenty of Donnie Yen reviews so far on my channel. And then Kate Choi, you may have seen in uh, Eye in the Sky, actually. Uh, she played the lead in that one. Excellent movie, by the way. And in this one, 14 Blades, she plays a, a badass, and quite a convincing badass, I might say. Quite a good-looking one as well. So it's basically, you know, a historical action flick. You got the sword play going on there. Pretty solid flick. I liked it a lot. Good flick. 14 Blades. Very nice. Now next here we have one that I've covered on my Asian Horror Year in Review playlist, and that is Abnormal Beauty. Now uh, this one is from the Pang Brothers, of course. If you want to know my thoughts on that, you could look at my, uh, you can check out my Asian Horror Year in Review from 2004, I believe this film was from. So this one's pretty cool. You have a girl who has some psychological problems. Let's put it that way. And, uh, yeah, things get pretty violent. This was a solid flick. Tartan, Asian, Extreme. I really, uh, cherish my Tartan, Asia, Extreme DVDs ever since they went bankrupt. I think they're still floating around on the internet because somebody bought out their library. But, uh, I always like to have them in my collection. Those are the days, the Tartan, Asian, Extreme. Now, the next one here I also did a review on on my channel and it's another excellent movie and that is Accident starring our boy Louis Koo who is good in everything really this is the one where he uh, he's basically a, a part of a team of hitmen and women who kill people and make it look like accidents but then one of their own teammates dies in an apparent accident and then they, they start suspecting, wait a second, was that really an accident? Or is there another team out there that's taking us out? So this is a very, very cool flick. Very slow paced, as I said in my review, but it's very unique. I like the style of it. Um, very solid. I also have a, another DVD of Accident for some reason. I have two of them. I think one of these was the Region 3 release. And the other one was the all-region release when it came out, or the Region 1 release in the U.S. Sometimes I just can't wait. You know what I mean? I, and sometimes you don't know if a movie's going to get a release in the United States. Um, so if it comes out, if I love a movie and it comes out in a Region 3 DVD in its home country with English subtitles, I usually snatch it up. And then, you know, because my computer with VLC player will play all-region DVDs, as well as my DVD player. But, uh, and then if it comes out again on Region 1, depending on whether or not I want to screen it for people at other people's houses, sometimes I'll buy the Region 1 as well. Oh man, the next one here. This one is, uh, 
Yeah, this one I'm definitely going to do a review on. This is one, one negative of this DVD collection video uh, project is that I'm going to tip my hand in every movie I have in my collection. But uh, eh, I'm not going to say too much, so I guess I won't ruin all the surprises. So this is a romantic comedy called All About Women. And it's got a loaded cast. Uh, you have my favorite Chinese actress, Zhou Xun, or, uh, Zhou Xun, is that how you pronounce it? I'm terrible at Chinese, I'm sorry. Zhou Xun. Um, we have uh, Kitty Zhang. And then uh, Kwai Lun Mei. All three of which are awesome actresses, really. Kwai Lun Mei is just outstanding, too. I, I usually go back and forth between her and Zhou Xun as like my favorite Kwai Lun Mei, I think, is Taiwanese. Zhou Xun is Chinese, but still. it's uh, In terms of the Chinese language films, they're both high up there on my list. This is a very fun movie. It's a romantic comedy about uh, one woman is like a boxer, an amateur boxer. The other one is like a scientist who develops a, a serum to uh, seduce men, which is quite dubious when you think about it. And the other one is an extremely hot executive for like a... Uh, I don't know what type of company she worked for exactly, advertising or something, and all three of them just kind of cross paths, and mayhem ensues in romantic comedy fashion. This was a lot of fun. I think it was directed by Choi Hark, actually. Um, it's one of his non-action flicks, and I think it worked really well. Very cool flick. I, I watch this movie a lot. All right, now we get into some of the movies where I'm going to have to consult my notes on some of these. You have Angel Force. So this is one of those low-budget action flicks that stars Moon Lee. This one is a Moon Lee flick. So any movie, really, that stars Moon Lee, Yukari Oshima, um, you know, some of the ladies of the, of the Hong Kong Girls with Guns uh, subgenre of action film during the 80s and 90s, a lot of these are kind of hard to remember because, I mean, look at the title, Angel Force. And half of the titles have the, have, the, uh, have the word angel in them. So let me quickly consult my notes here. What did I, what did I think of Angel Force? It's got Moon Lee, so that's always, it's always a positive, and it looks like I, I enjoyed this one. So let me check my notes here real quick. All right, Angel Force. So Moon Lee leads a strike force into Thailand because shooting in Thailand is very inexpensive when you're a filmmaker, to rescue an American. So the script is weak, which is no surprise. Most of the of uh, Moon Lee and Yukari Oshima films are weak. Uh, but there's tons of action to compensate. So it looks like the you know you have a lot of action in this movie that compensates for the poor script writing. And this one, only Moon Lee shows up in this one, so there's no Yukari Oshima in this one. And the reason I say that is because a lot of the movies that these two women did, I don't know what percentage, but a pretty good percentage, they were in together. So they, uh, they show up a lot together, so it's fun to see them together. But Angel Force, you just get Moon Lee, and it's a pretty good one. It's pretty good. And we have another one here, another Moon Lee movie. And this one also has Sybil Who, it looks like. And this is called Angel's Project. Of course, it has to have the word angel in it. It's got one of these girls in it. So, uh, yeah, they are escorting a prisoner to Malaysia this time. They're doing a, some globe hopping in these movies. And, uh, yeah, bad stuff happens. So, Angel's Project. What did I think of this one here? Sybil Hu is... Mm, she's not as good as Moon Lee or Yukari Oshima. She doesn't have the martial arts, uh, I guess, abilities... But actually, Moon Lee and uh, Yukari Oshima really, I don't think, were martial artists as children. I think they were dancers. And then they kind of made their way into the Hong Kong film industry. And because they were so athletic and flexible, they just they rolled right on these action movies. And their, their scenes are really solid, man. If you want to see you know, women fight in movies, like just as good as men and better than most men can fight in movies... You know, check out some of these girls' films. So Angel's Project, let's see, uh, oh, this is one of those ones where Moon Lee actually disappears for chunks of the runtime, and that happens sometimes with these movies, you know, because Moon Lee and Yukari Oshima, and I'll get to this when I start reviewing more of their films, they did a lot of movies to, uh, within a short period of time. 
I think like I wouldn't be surprised if both of them combined would did like 10 movies in one year you know what I mean like they did a lot of them so sometimes they'll come in and out they'll only show up for like two or three minutes in the movie this one she's around a little bit pretty good flick but uh you know not as good as Angel Force or some of their other ones all right this one's this one's a solid one. It's another different kind of film. And I'm not really breaking these up between mainland China, Hong Kong, or Taiwan. But uh, if I remember where it's from, most of these are Hong Kong so far, I think. But if I remember any that are from uh, mainland China or Taiwan off the top of my head, I'll let you know. But don't, don't, uh, don't kill me if I don't point it out. This one is called Beast Stalker. This is a very solid thriller. This one's got, uh, it's directed by Dante Lan, who's done a bunch of good flicks. And you got uh, Nicholas Tsi and Nick Chung, both of which are very good actors. It's, uh, it basically derives from like an accident. I think a car accident kind of spins things out of control. And there's like a kidnapping scene. Um involved too it's kind of a complicated plot but it's pretty violent it's very intense very well acted and it's definitely recommended here uh the beast stalker very solid flick all right our next one here's another uh very special one to me this one is called beyond our Ken. Odd title. It's an anti-romance. It's not a romance film. It's an anti-romance film. So basically what you have here is you have uh, Jillian Chung uh, breaks up with her boyfriend who then moves on to uh, Tao Hong and Jillian gets pretty pissed. So she convinces the other girl, his current girlfriend, that he's a jerk. And then they both conspire to get back at him, to get revenge at him. Um, this is a very artsy movie, and it's outstanding. Uh, I have not done a review on this yet for my channel, but I, I definitely will. It's one of my favorite movies. Very Just watching this movie, uh, the visuals are just phenomenal. And it, it's one of the first, like, quote-unquote, artsy movies that I really fell in love with. Because it's so engaging from start to finish. The acting is very solid. Ho Chung Pang is one of the best directors in the world, in my opinion. And uh, this is the one that made me a fan of his. Very good movie. And uh, I very much enjoy this one. I've seen this movie a million times. Alright, the next two are two recent purchases. Um, they're horror movies, which I'm going to get to soon. We have not reached 2008 yet in my Asian Horror Year in Review playlist, but I think... These are from 2008, and I will get to them, unfortunately. The first one is Bite Till Die, Card of Death. And, uh, yeah, not very good. The only reason I bought this, I blind bought this, because Oxide Pang directed it, and he's awesome. Uh, this one, not so good. I was pretty disappointed. I'm not even going to bother to read you the, the, uh, the story. It's not really worth seeking out. And then, of course, I got the second one because I bought them both at the same time because sometimes I get out of control with the blind buys. This is Bite Till Death Killing Box. <clears throat> I heard about these movies for a few years and I couldn't track them down until they showed up on Yes Asia, I think, um, or eBay maybe. And I snatched them up. Weren't, what, weren't, uh, were not worth the purchase, not worth the money. Sorry, Oxide, but it just didn't work. All right, this next, this next double feature. I usually don't buy these double feature, kung fu double feature things, but for some reason this one uh, struck me. So this one is the double feature of Kung Fu Beyond the Grave and Chinese Vampire Story. So I think Kung Fu Beyond the Grave has like, it starts off like a normal kung fu flick and then like some zombies show up. It's not as great as you, as you think it would be. It's still decent, I thought. It was pretty good. And then the Chinese Vampire Story is kind of like a low-grade offshoot of the Mr. Vampire films. 
Not very good. I don't recommend Chinese Vampire Story. But Kung Fu Beyond the Grave was pretty good. Pretty good. Oh man, this one. Jeesh. This is where I'm going to have to... I got some explaining to do with this one. Got some explaining to do. <clears throat> yeah, Protégé de la Rose Noire. Also known as Black Rose Academy, I think. Now... Okay, it, I have to do some explaining here. So, when I first started getting into Asian movies, right, I saw a movie called The Twins Effect, which had uh, these two girls in it known as the twins. Or, they're not known as the twins, they're just known as twins. And they were a canto pop music group, you know, cheesy music. But The Twins Effect actually had some pretty sweet action scenes. It was, it was co-directed by Donnie Yen, at least he did the action for it. So I became a fan of these two girls because you don't see, you know, small girls just kicking that much rear end in, a, in an action scene in a movie. So I got, you know, I got a little carried away and I got, I bought a handful of their movies, a few of which were excellent, like Beyond Our Ken, Jillian Chung was in that. And then uh, Charlene Choi is her, is, her, uh, is her teammate, I guess you could say, in the twins duo. But this movie was just terrible. It, it was pretty bad. Um, it's like, I don't even remember the plot. You got Ekin Chang, who's not a good actor. He's had a few good performances just because he's been in so many movies. Um, it's very silly, really stupid. But, at the end of the movie, there's a decent fight scene at the end of this movie. And Donnie Yen's little sister shows up. I'm trying to see if it has her name. I forgot her first name. Uh, it does not have it. Chris Yen, I think it is, Chris Yen, and she was pretty good, she had some screen presence to her, you know, the way she moved, so I wanted to see her in more action flicks, because she only shows up uh, a few times in the movie, and she just never, never showed up in any more action movies, I don't know why, she was pretty good in this movie, but yeah, this is, uh, I don't know why I still have this movie, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, to be honest with you. But uh, the Twins, yeah, I, I actually bought a few of their music CDs back in the day before I upgraded in my Asian, Asian music. Those were the nostalgic times, you know, when you're just getting into stuff. Now we go from a really cheesy movie to one that is freaking awesome. Brutal, awesome flick that not many people uh, talk about. And that is The Blade. The Blade. Now this one... Uh, Who's the lead actor? I always forget his name. Is it Zhao and Zhao? It might be him. Um, this is an awesome flick. Again, a Troy Hark movie. And, uh, yeah, Zhao and Zhao. Now, this is like an old school, almost like period flick. Where you're out in like the, the middle of a desert, I think it is. And it's like a... I can't remember the plot exactly because it's been a few years since I've seen it. But there's a lot of violence. A lot of swordplay, blade-like violence. The martial arts scenes were awesome in this. This is one that... Uh, if you want to check out like a violent martial arts uh, flick that has a really good dark tone to it, you got to check out The Blade, man. It's a very solid flick. It's definitely one of Troy Hark's most uh, acclaimed and... Uh, Impressive films. Alright, so now we got... Bodyguards and Assassins. We got Donnie Yen again making a silly face like he sometimes does. This movie's just loaded, loaded cast. You got Donnie Yen, Nicholas C. You got Tony Lung. The other Tony Lung. Leon lies in this. I'm just looking at the faces here of who I can recognize. Pretty cool flick. Very long movie, but it's pretty ambitious and epic in its, in its, in its scope. It's, uh, uh, there's a lot of setup and uh, I guess you could say like black shadow planning between all these different people. And these assassins are mostly our protagonists and they try to fight off. Uh, let me see here. It's set in 1906. So, so they're protecting a dude. That's why it's called bodyguards and assassins. They're protecting the dude. 
and they're just uh, they're going toe to toe with hundreds of assassins. <clears throat> this flick is pretty awesome. You know, some people might think the opening half is a little bit on the slow side, but if you make it to the second half, this thing is just thrilling. Very cool flick. All right. I did not get through much at all. <clears throat> I'm blabbering a little bit too much, I think. Oh, well. <laughs> so I want to keep these to about 20 minutes in segments. But, uh, yeah, so that, that'll be... That'll be the first part of this uh, Chinese language DVD collection video. Covered a nice mix. And uh, definitely check out part two. And it looks like there's going to be like five or six or seven parts in this. This is going slowly. But whatever. Who cares? It's it's the Christmas season. You know what I mean? i got to show off some DVDs. So, as always, we'll see you next time.